Everybody, this is uh, Darren Sabedra again with Bay Area News Group, Mercury News, East Bay Times. Uh, it is high school football season all over again. Just seems like we ended last year and all of a sudden we're here for yet another season of uh, the four-month grind. 16 weeks of high school football and we're back for uh, a pick em show. We have a couple of newcomers. Uh, Mike Lefkow will still be making picks and making uh, occasional cameos on the show. Won't be with us this week, but uh, we have two newcomers since the end of last season. Nathan Canelau, who joined us in the winter. Hey, what's going on, hey, guys? Nathan. And Christian Babcock, who uh, joined us over the summer. Both uh, Nathan and Christian are products of the Bay Area, unlike myself and Joseph Dykus. <laughs> Joseph, what's up? Back for year three. I'm at year I'm, three. Um, <clears throat> I guess officially, uh, compared to the rest of the group now, I'm technically in the top half of uh, finishers from last year, right? Because Lefkow isn't picking anymore, or at least now I'm in. No, he is picking. He is picking. Lefkow will be picking. He just won't be on the show. Wow. I have his Got picks. It. So you'll be hearing his picks as we go through the games. But as always, we'll talk about a couple of, uh, you know, issues or, you know, some talking points uh, before we get to our picks. And uh, we're going to keep it pretty simple this week. We'll start with uh, who we think is the best team in the Bay Area right now and who we think will be the best team in the Bay Area after the 16th weekend of high school football. Um, Joseph, since you're now um, the veteran, um, of the trio, you get the pick first. So I think right now, I think that the best team in the Bay Area is probably De La Salle. Um, I mean, they bring back so many great, great players. Um, their entire backfield, I believe, is back. Defense, I think their entire secondary has Division One offers. Although I would say by the end of the year, I would not be surprised if Pittsburgh is the best team in the Bay. I, me and Nathan saw them playing in Pittsburgh at their scrimmage, and they uh, they did not look, look like they were having too much trouble uh, doing what they wanted with uh, El Cerrito and Monta Vista. You do realize that De La Salle is 270-0-1 against NCS teams since 1992. You know what? I do know that. And and has, it ever, has it ever stopped me? Has it ever stopped me from dozen, dozens and dozens of times? Um, exactly. I agree with you. I take uh, De La Salle as the as the top team right now. At the end of the season, uh, we could have a, a De La Salle Sarah or De La Salle Reardon or maybe even a De La Salle St. Francis uh, or regional um, if the uh, state goes that way and if if Folsom. Uh, if Folsom runs the table, uh, maybe it's Folsom's turn to take a swing at Modern Day or Bosco or whomever comes out of that uh, Southern California um, mm -hmm. regional for uh, for the open division. But uh, Nathan, I'll let you go next. Who who's your number one team now, and who do you who do you think will be number one when we're all done? Uh, I think the best team in the Bay Area right now is uh, Archbishop Reardon. Um, I'm really big on their offensive talent. I think Mike Mitchell and, and Chris Lawson, um, Sanai Thomas, they just had, and their offensive line up front is really strong. Um, I think they're going to be an exciting team that could really air it out. And, and um, I think uh, on paper, I think they are the best team in the Bay Area now. But like Joseph, uh, we both watch Pittsburgh. And I think, and I agree, I think by the end of the season, I don't know if there's a team deeper than Pittsburgh High, just division one talent uh, across the board. Um, in the trenches, in the secondary, in the skill positions, I think by the end of the year we'll be maybe looking at Pittsburgh as uh, the team to to, br to break De La Salle's streak. Ooh, okay, all right, uh, Christian. I know you've only been with us about eight weeks, but you are a Bay Area product. Uh, uh, obviously, you've been brushing up on high school football over the last several weeks here. Who's your top team right now? Yeah, so Joseph basically articulated what I was going to say, except better. But um, yeah, De La Salle, I think, is probably the leader in the clubhouse at this point. I think Pittsburgh could emerge with the talent they have. I think Reardon is on the table, and I think Sarah, even though they lost a lot, maybe by the end of the year, getting some reps against really good teams, they might factor into that conversation by the end of the year. There you go. 
Uh, next talking point, non-league matchups. We have, uh, it's always the fun part of the year where we get these really great matchups and, uh, we have several in week one. Uh, but I'm going to start with a week two matchup. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing, um, how Sarah, uh, does when it, it travels to De La Salle. They've beaten the Spartans two years in a row and, uh, kind of curious to see if, uh, if De La Salle will end Sarah's streak of two wins in a row over the Spartans. So um, that is the the one that I'm looking forward to, to seeing that result um, in week two. Uh, Nathan, who are you looking forward to seeing? Uh, also week two matchup. I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, McClymans go to Mountain View to play St. Francis. Um, I think that styles make fights, and I think these are two teams whose styles uh, could really make for a, a high-scoring game. And I, I really like the talent. Uh, both teams have Division One talent. Um, I think it'll, it will be an exciting matchup uh, kickoff week two. There you go. Uh, Christian, what are you looking forward to non-league-wise? Yeah, we just talked about it, but Pittsburgh going, you know, hosting Los Gatos. They had a great game last year. And I think, you know, this could kind of be Pittsburgh's coming out party against the Los Gatos team that lost a lot, but obviously accomplished a lot last year. That's uh uh, that's a, another good one that I'm definitely looking forward to. Uh, Scotty Brennan, quarterback at Los Gatos. Uh, Henry Masters, linebacker. Uh, Los Gatos has a, a quality team, but uh, it's always tough making the trip up to Pittsburgh and playing the Pirates. Uh, Joseph, who you got? Who, who's your non-league matchup? So there, there's, there's a lot of great options. Um, I think we talked about them already. Nathan did. Uh, McClyman's is going to play host to Saramone Valley. A couple years ago, uh, Luke Baker kind of had, I guess what I'd call his coming out party, where they came back from, I believe it was 21 down with about five minutes left, and then just barely lost to McClyman's at the Mac house. So this sh that should be another great game, and I'm hoping it's just as exciting as that 2022 matchup. Very good. Well, the season kicks off Thursday, and we're going to uh, end our talking points with with Christian telling us a little bit about what he's looking forward to in the Thursday matchup that he'll be covering. It'll be Lincoln of San Jose, uh, I believe the second oldest public school in, in San Jose, traveling to Willow Glen, uh, which I believe is the third oldest public school in San Jose. Uh, Christian, what are you looking forward to? You know, is it just the fact that it's a, a first game for anybody you know you know that you'll be covering uh or is there more that you're looking forward to and seeing that matchup sure yeah i'm looking forward to that i actually got tripped up doing research last night because lincoln had their scrimmage listed as a game so but this will be their first actual game and like you said two of the oldest schools in san jose and i think it should be a good matchup both teams should be competitive in their leagues and you know this matchup you get an intra-city matchup and it should be competitive game between two solid teams. So looking forward to it. Well, let's get let's get to the picks. And that game is first on the list. It's a Thursday night game uh, to kick off the season. Willow Glen will be at home to play Lincoln. Uh, Lincoln returns uh, Kyan Phillips. We we know all about Kyan Phillips, right, Joseph? Oh yes. He's, a heck He's of a been team. a star since he was a freshman. Um. Kevin Collins, longtime coach at Lincoln, has done great things. Uh, Oscar Caballero at Willow Glen. Uh, he's back after a, a mishap at the uh, middle of last season. Um, that, but uh, he's back leading the Rams. Uh, I'll pick first. I'll do the first pick of the season. I'm going to go with Lincoln to uh, knock off Willow Glen in the season opener. Uh, I think it's going to be close, though. I'm, I'm saying within seven to ten points, but I'll let uh, Joseph go next. Joseph, who you got? And for my first pick, I, I think I'll, I'll disagree with you. Um, I think it'll be close, too. I I mean, home field advantage, especially in this week one, where I'm sure it, almost every team's going to have good, big crowds. I think that's going to be a major factor, and I'm, I'm going to go with Willow Glenn. Nathan. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to agree with Joseph here. I'm going with Willow Glenn. I think Cedeno Chavez, um, an all-league quarterback from last season, is going to come back even stronger, and I, I really like Willow Glenn's experience in defense. Christian. I'm going to agree with you, Darren. I think Lincoln is just kind of has the edge as a team, and the fact that they don't have to travel very far, I think they'll be ready to go for week one. Uh, Lincoln is 6-5 and five against Willow Glenn in the max preps era, so uh, – so it will be close, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. Game two, 
uh santa Teresa has lights right christian yes that's what they tell us it's been an ordeal trying to trying to get those lights back on after they were disabled by some some thieves but they've been able to figure it out so it should be a great atmosphere break in where they lost some helmets and uh it was great to see the community rally around them reading your monday morning lights item this week where Mitty, bellerman scotts valley all all chipped in to help uh santa Teresa. santa Teresa will be at home to play fremont of sunnyvale um i like santa Teresa in this one being at home kids are going to be excited playing under the lights uh, I think they're going to have a little bit too much for Fremont of Sunnyvale, even though I really like Fremont of Sunnyvale's athlete, uh, athlete quarterback. He plays multiple positions. Henry, when, how do you pronounce his name? Joseph Puenrostro? I bet your guess is as good as mine. Puenrostro is what we'll call him, call him here. Hopefully we're not mispronouncing uh, that, uh, Henry, but uh, unfortunately for you and uh, Fremont of Sunnyvale, I'm picking Santa Teresa to win uh, on opening night. Nathan, you're next. Yeah, I'm, I'm agree with you there. I think San Teresa um, opening night at home after all that happened. Uh, I believe in, in, I think the kind of the momentum of this team, and I think week one they'll they'll come out and they'll get a win. Christian. Yeah, I think it's just such a unique set of circumstances. You don't often have a team this motivated in week one based on something other than the start of the season. So it kind of feels like a perfect storm for San Teresa to take this one and joseph yeah i mean i love to be a contrarian here but i think santa Teresa, to quote our, our former writer jesus cano they're going to be juiced um going into this game and there's i can't see maybe they a little too excited early on but i think it's just gonna i think they're gonna win by at least 10 just all with right. all the momentum they have uh left also took santa Teresa, and he also took lincoln of san jose to to win over willow glenn uh let's move on to friday night let's uh go through these little little quicker we got amador valley el cerrito obviously this is a big matchup the quarterback uh uh who neither of them played in the game last season between these teams so tristan tia from uh amador valley who was going through a sit-out period and jonathan Kraft, of course was the quarterback at james logan last year um We've been told, or Nathan's been told, that Jonathan Kraft will be eligible week one to play against Amador Valley, which makes this matchup even even juicier, obviously. Uh, El Cerrito ranks sixth in our uh, preseason rankings that came out this morning, which is Tuesday. Um, I like El Cerrito's defense. El Cerrito, El Cerrito, I think, will have too much for Amador. I'm taking El Cerrito. The game was 14-7 last year, El Cerrito, with El Cerrito winning. Uh, I think it's going to be higher scoring this year. Not terribly, uh, not not super high scoring, I don't think, because I think El Cerrito's defense is really good, but I think they pull it out. Nathan, you're next. Yeah, I I, I think El Cerrito pulls this one out. I think the craft being eligible is, is big. Um, I think it'll be actually the opposite, though. I think it'll be high scoring. Maybe I think we have maybe a game of the year candidate with both quarterbacks, so I'll take El Cerrito um, in a high scoring game. Christian? Yeah, pretty simple. I think El Cerrito is one of the best teams in the Bay Area. They're at home, and they're going to win this All game. right. Joseph. You know, this is one that I'm going to go out on a limb. I'll, I'll take uh, I'll take the visitors for this one. I think I think it's going to be close, and I think it will be 35-28. I'll throw that out there. Wow. So you and Left Cow both take an Amador Valley. Yeah. Let's look at that. Uh, next game on the list, St. Mary's Berkeley uh, traveling to Moreau Catholic. This is a rematch. Of playoff game last year that uh st mary's of berkeley won 26 to 15 but uh john trotman who was the coach there he's no longer there right he's now at castro valley mm -hmm. and casey moreno who was at college park is now at st mary's of berkeley um st mary's is 10 and 3 against moreau in the max preps era which dates back to 2004. that being said i'm taking moreau catholic to win uh on opening night i'll let you go next joseph yeah, I'm taking Moreau Catholic. They've got the the three J's: Jalen Arnold, Jaden Bryant, and Jeremiah Arnold. All uh, they're all back, so I'll, I'll take uh, Moreau Catholic. Christian, I will go with Moreau too. I think that quarterback, running back, receiver trio is going to be tough to beat, and also, you know, with St. Mary's breaking in a new coach, that's going to be a hurdle to overcome. They're going to have to go on the road for the first time 
under new coach. So that's always a, a different experience for a team. Uh, Nathan? I agree with all you guys. I think Royal Catholic um, home field advantage is going to play a big part um, and they can have a great big crowd. So I'm going Royal Catholic. All right. And Mike Lefkow is also going with Moreau Catholic. Uh, next on the list, we're going back to the South Bay where Lee High School will be at home to play Leland. First meeting between these teams since 2015. Leland is four and three in the Max Preps era against Lee. Um, Jacob Gibson, quarterback at Leland. Charlie Lyons, I believe he's the new quarterback at Lee from what I remember reading in Christian's preview. Um, I think he's a junior. Um, Lee is in the Mount Hamilton division. Uh, we picked them to finish fourth in the Mount Hamilton. And Leland is uh, now down in the Santa Teresa Valley division of the BVAL. All that being said, I'm taking Lee. I'll let you go next, uh, Nathan. Yeah, I, I think Lee, I think Coach Kyle Padilla will have those guys ready, and they return uh, quarterback Charlie Lyons. So I'm going with Lee. Joseph. I'm going to take Lee as well. I think if Luke Whitson was still with Leland, it'd be a little more competitive. But uh, I found out that he moved to Arizona. So he has no, and he's the kid who did everything for Leland last year. So Lee should win this one. Christian, this is in your neck of the woods over there in the uh, South San or Campbell. Well, Lee's in San Jose, but it's down there near where you are. Who you yeah. got? Good sort of interest city. Again, rivalry, two teams close to each other. And that could maybe diminish the home field, but I think Lee's the better team anyway, so they will take this one at home. All right, and uh, Left Cow also took Lee. Kyle Padilla has been at Lee forever as the coach, and, and and Kelly Kelly King Jr. has been at Leland now for quite a few years. So, two veteran coaches going at it. Uh, next game on the list, a rematch of a game last year. Both of these teams made it to the to a state final last year with SoCal winning a state final, and Los Gatos, which Joseph, you were at that game in pa at Pasadena, Pasadena City College, is that what yes. it is? Yes. Mm -hmm. Where Los Gatos lost a, a heartbreaker. Um, new quarterback of Los Gatos, we think it's going to be Scotty Brennan, the, yeah. the son of uh, former San Jose State and now current uh, Arizona coach Brent Brennan. Uh, Henry Masters leads a, a solid linebacking core for Los Gatos. Uh, SoCal lost two games last year. I, I was at the one one of the two that they lost it was to Los Gatos and the score was 45 to 14. I think it's gonna be closer this time, but I'm still taking the cats. I'm going Los Gatos. Joseph, who you got? I'm taking Los Gatos too. And you you don't think that we're gonna see uh Scotty Brand throw for five touchdowns like you saw Minyard do in his uh debut? Ooh. Well, we'll see. Uh Christian, who you got? Yeah, I think Los Gatos, even though they lost some key pieces, they're still a really good team. Again, not going too far. So I think that'll help Scotty Brennan probably. It's going to be out there kind of calm the nerves. And I don't know if he's going to throw five touchdowns, but I think he'll he'll put up a few and the Cats will take it. There you go. Uh, Nathan. Uh, yeah, I'm going with the Cats. Uh, I think Scotty Brennan will probably throw around, I think, at least three touchdowns um, and a big win for Los Gatos. It's a clean sweep. Left Kel's also going with the Cats. All right, we're on page two of this list here of games. Palo Alto Mountain View. I covered the their game last year. It was a CCS Championship uh, Division Four, which uh, Palo Alto won 34-33. Interesting stat here. They have played 17 times in the Max Preps era, and Palo Alto has won 16 of them. 16 and one against Mountain View. This is a uh, Rick Esparza's first game as Mountain View's coach, taking over for. Uh, Tim Lugo, who is now just uh, he's going to handle the athletic director duties there uh, specifically. Uh, he was doing um, both, but now he's uh, the AD, just the AD at Mountain View. Anyhow, uh, I'll let you guys go first. Uh, Christian, who you got? Yeah, I feel like everything sort of intrinsic about this game, everything that's outside of what's going to happen on the field would favor Mountain View. They're at home. They got the revenge factor. They're breaking in a new coach, and I just have a feeling Palo Alto is going to win this one. So I'm going with Palo Alto. Going Palo Alto. Nathan. Yeah, I'm going to go with Palo Alto. I think just more playmakers um, on the offensive side for them. Jeremiah Fung is an outstanding player, and I think uh, Palo Alto gets this one. Joseph. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it three for three. I think Palo Alto, they just bring back so much, and Mountain View is replacing their quarterback, receiver, running back, and several other key players, plus their coach. Although Rick Esparza is a great coach. 
we did um, yeah. prospect last year. So I think Palo Alto wins. Um, yeah. Uh, left lefty's got Palo Alto, and I've got Palo Alto, so it's a clean sweep for Palo Alto. Uh, next game on the list, uh, Valley. Uh, it's just a traditional opener now, where Valley Christian is going to make the uh, trip over to Santa Clara to play Wilcox. Two uh, very good teams, uh, both ranked. Uh, Valley is ninth in our rankings, and Wilcox is twelfth. Uh, Valley won last year, sixteen to fifteen at home, and uh, is five and two against Wilcox in the Max Preps era. Um, I'll let you go first, Nathan. Uh, I'm going to take Valley Christian here. I think uh, Wilcox, um, I know they're, they're replacing a lot from last season. Uh, I think it might still be an adjustment period for them, so I'm going to take Valley. Christian? I'm leaning Wilcox. I think that home field is going to be a big deal for this one. I think they're going to be fired up and ready to play. And in a game this close between two pretty even teams, I'm going to take the home field. So I'll go with Wilcox. Uh, Joseph? I'm going to go with Valley Christian. Um Kind of like what Nathan said, there Wilcox is just replacing so many key guys that I think Valley Christian they they bring back quite a few talented players. So going with the Warriors, I'm going Valley and Left Cow's going Valley. So uh, uh, Christian is going to be waving the Wilcox flag there in this yeah. in this one. Uh, next on the list, uh, Grant from Sacramento, also a state finalist last year uh, in one of the upper divisions. They came up just short. De La Salle, also a state finalist last year. They came up just short. Uh, they're meeting for the first time in the Max Preps era. Uh, not sure if they've played before 2004. Uh, but De La Salle, as we've noted earlier, has a lot back. I mean, you just look, the quarterback's got sprinter speed, Toa, uh, Toa Fave. Matthew Johnson, the edge rusher, is, is just a stud. The, the running back trio, if they really go back to the, the veer, and just focus more on that than trying to become a spread team. Yeah. I mean, you look at that running back trio of, of Dominique Cowley, Derek Blanche, and now uh, Deuce Jones Drew, who, if that name sounds familiar, he is the son of De La Salle legend Maurice Jones Drew. Um, that's a lot of talent. Uh, I got the Spartans winning on opening night for them. It's Grant's second game. Grant opened with a 28 7 win over Edison of Stockton. Christian, who you got? When in doubt, go De La Salle. We think they're going to be the best team in the Bay, and obviously they're playing a team from Sacramento, but I think they're going to take this one. Too much talent. Uh, Nathan? Uh, I'm taking De La Salle, but I will say with Grand Sacramento, they've, they've been very vocal on Twitter about how they have, they're playing with a chip on their shoulder this season. Um, I think they're underrated. So I think De La Salle wins, but I think it's a lot closer than people think. Joseph? Yeah, I think I think Grant. I mean, they graduated their top. I think two rushers, their top two receivers. Bring a, they bring a quarterback, but I mean, Dale South, they're bringing back all this talent, and then you're playing in Concord. I mean, I, that that seems to be a recipe for a pretty comfortable Dale South win. All right, and Left Cow has taken uh, Dale LaSalle as well, so everybody's taking Dale LaSalle on this one. Uh, next on the list, uh, Pittsburgh. We've talked about Pittsburgh on the show already. Uh, traveling to uh, Elk Grove to play Monterey Trail. Uh, Marley Alcantara back again as quarterback for the Pirates. Juju Walls is a, a stud on defense. Uh, Pittsburgh's just loaded everywhere. I got Pittsburgh winning this pretty comfortably. Joseph, who you got? Yeah, I've got I've got Pittsburgh winning. I don't know if it's gonna be a running clock, but it wouldn't shock me if it's a running clock. Uh, Nathan? Yeah, I'm going to go that it's going to be running clock. I think Pittsburgh wins pr more than comfortably um, in the fourth. You know, pretty early on, they're going to make a statement. Christian? Yeah, unlike the Pittsburgh Steelers for now, Pittsburgh <laughs> of California has a quarterback. So, really? yeah, they're going to win this one pretty easily. And, and Left Cow's got Pittsburgh winning as well. Uh, next on the list, Reardon. Uh, we've talked about them on the show. They've got talent everywhere uh against mcclimans uh mcclimans ranked four or fifth by us and reared in third i should have mentioned that pittsburgh is ranked number two um i mean reared in chris lawson the receiver going to what washington mm -hmm. uh, michael mitchell the quarterback uh who's Got offers from everybody elusive uh um the yeah. entire offensive line has offers from the entire uh, west coast all right. Um, I'm going to pick first. I'm going Reardon. 
to win this one. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna knock off Mac at the Mac House. Nathan, who you got? Yeah, I also have Reardon. I think they're gonna win big at the Mac House to make a you know really big statement win to open the season. Uh, Joseph. Uh, this is the game I'm going to be at, and I don't think I have ever seen Mac lose a home game. I don't think they're going to lose this one either. I think it's going to be pretty – it's going to be obviously competitive, but I think Mac actually wins this by probably 10. Okay. They, they got a quarterback, apparently, Burrell Staples. Uh, Christian. I think I'm going Reardon. They just got a lot. I think this could be, we talked about, they could be in that conversation for best team in the Bay Area. I think if that's going to happen, they have to win this game. And I think that's going to happen with them winning this game. Left Cal's got Mac, our, our longtime Bay Area. Lefty school, knows. Czar, historian. He's taken Mac to knock off Reardon. And Lefty knows talent, right? He does. Uh, all right, a few more games on the list. We got SI against SRV. This is a rematch of game from last year. I mean, SRV breaking in a new quarterback, uh, uh, Rhett Thompson. Is that, is that his name, Joseph? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, obviously, all everything, probably the best player in the Bay Area, Marco Jones. Um, Texas AM bound offers from everywhere. Uh, I don't see them losing on opening night. Uh, Coach Aaron Becker in his. Uh, Preview survey to us mentioned that uh, that the quarterback would have started for a lot of teams last season. Of course, he did not at SRV because they had Luke Baker. Um, I'm taking SRV to win this one. Uh, I'll go with you next, Nathan. Yeah, I'm taking SRV. I think in Marco Jones, they trust, and I think he'll make a bunch of plays opening night to uh, take this one pretty comfortably at home. Christian? Yeah, I think San Ramon Valley is the better team. They're at home. They're going to be juiced up, as Joseph likes to say, and they're going to win this one. Joseph. You know what? I'll go against the grain. I think St. Ignatius, they they bring back a lot of talent too. And they brought in some talented players. I know they lost the tight end to, to Bosco, but I don't know, just something about SI. Uh, give me the Wildcats. Left left cow's got uh San Ramon winning this one. Uh, three more games on the list. Uh Vanden Fairfield making the trip to Moraga to play Campolindo. Um Kevin Macy, we all know what a great coach he is. He undersells his team, but mm -hmm. he's a terrific coach. Uh, Micah Parker back and running back for for Campo. Um, this one was a little. This one was hard for me to pick because Campo doesn't start the season great. They finish the season great, um, but they're at home. I'm going to take Campo, but it wouldn't shock me if Vanden wins this game. Um, Joseph, who you got? You know, Kevin Macy may not publicly show a lot of confidence in his team, at least in our in our surveys that we send out. But I do have confidence in his team. I think Campo wins. All right, uh, Nathan. Uh, I got Vanden. Uh, I think last year this 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 matchup uh, they went to double overtime, and I think uh, Vanden is out for revenge, and I think they'll they'll get a win uh, on the road. Christian. Yeah, I think Campo probably has the slight edge as a team. And I think being at home, they'll be relaxed and maybe, you know, they'll be a better team at the end of the year. But I think they'll be good enough to win this one. And left cow took Vanden. So lefty and Nathan both taking Vanden. Two more games on the list. This is the last, the last Friday game where Sarah uh, will play at Folsom. They, they played the last couple of years. Sarah's won the last couple of years. Uh, Sarah obviously replacing 18 of its 22 starters from a team that uh, went to uh, three consecutive Open Division State Championship games. Sarah at home last year scored 21 points against Folsom in the first quarter, I believe, and had to hold on to win 21-14 against Ryder Lions and company. Ryder Lions was a sophomore quarterback. I mean, he's Mr. All-Everything. Uh, he's even better now. Folsom's got so much talent everywhere um might be the best team in all of norcal probably is at this point but we'll see um they don't play de la Salle this year which is unfortunate um but anyhow i i think that's just too much for sarah i think patrick walsh will have his guys ready but given what Folsom did to long beach poly last week i think the score was something like 63 to 20. Um, mm -hmm. i don't see sarah going to Folsom and winning so i'm taking Folsom. Nathan, you're going to be there. Who you got? 
Uh, yeah, I think watching that uh, uh, the Long Beach Poly game last week, uh, it's just really hard to pick Sarah in this matchup. I'm going Folsom. I think they win big, and I think Ryder Lines has another big game. Christian? Yeah, you win by 43. You got a five-star quarterback, and you got that magic blue turf that seems to confuse opponents. I'm going with Folsom. Joseph? You know, I think Sarah's going to keep it closer than people think because Patrick Walsh is that good of a coach, and he's going to have them playing well. But then I, I also watched Ryder Lions break like 10 tackles in that one viral run, and I was like, yeah, there's no way that Sarah's actually going to beat Folsom and Folsom. I think Folsom probably wins by two touchdowns. And left cow took Folsom, so it's a clean sweep of, for Folsom beating the – reigning top team in NorCal. Wow. Okay. Changing of the guard. Changing of the guard. Uh, last game on the list, and we'll wrap this thing up. Saturday, uh, Bellarmine uh, traveling to Menlo Atherton. Menlo Atherton ranked 22 by us. Bellarmine's 5-4 and four against MA in the Max Prep Sarah and won 17-14 last year. I think MA gets them this year. I'm taking MA. Left Cow's taking MA. Nathan, who are you taking? Yeah, I like MA's versatility in this matchup. Um, I'm going Emmanuel Atherton. Joseph? I am going to go with Bellarmine. The second year of the David Diaz and Fonte era, they do bring back a few guys. They're supposed to be pretty physical and tough, and i got to commit to the bit and not ever pick against Bellarmine. So Bellarmine it is. There you go. Christian, who are you taking? Yeah, I think Menlo Atherton has a slight, slight edge, and I think they're going to win this one. All right, that wraps up our picks for week one. Uh, be sure to check us out, mercurynews.com, eastbaytimes.com. Uh, we're all over Twitter. Um, follow all these guys. I don't know their handles off the top of my head, although I do know Christian's a CB underscore journalist. Yes. I think that's it. That's uh, it. Joseph, you want to give us your Twitter handle? If you uh, it's literally at Joseph underscore Dykus. Very uh, – very creative. Very creative. And you know, I, mm -hmm. Oh, uh, I was yeah. Uh, same, same, pretty, pretty basic. Uh, just my name, no space. Nathan Kenlow. That's pretty basic. Mine uh, has no space. Darren Sabedra, uh, all one, no space in between. Although the S is capitalized. Looks like it's been so long ago since I did this. Um, sign up for a digital subscription. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what the deal is. Uh, earlier in the week, it was $1 for six months, or I, I think there was a deal for two years. I can't remember what the price was, but check us out. Uh, we're going to have Athletes of the Week for the first time uh, starting on Monday, so uh, get your nominations in. Uh, all sports, athletic directors, if you're watching, uh, we're, we're looking for Girls Athlete of the Week nominations and boys, so uh, send in your Athlete of the Week nominations to high schools. That's plural, high schools at bayarianewsgroup.com. Uh, we take nominations uh, up until 11 a.m. every Monday, and then the list will be released uh, in the 12 to 1 o'clock hour, somewhere right around there. Um, guys, do you have anything else to add before we wrap this one up? Uh, just looking forward to another season of making picks and providing 15 teams every week with bulletin board material. There you go. Anybody else? Yeah, I'll um, just I'll just add that it, I think it should be mentioned. Fremont of Sunnyvale was trying to help Santa Teresa find somewhere to play when it wasn't clear they were going to be able to use their lights. They were looking at Cupertino. I believe mm -hmm. Fremont of Sunnyvale is undergoing a field renovation. So good on them to do that. But they're really going to have a whale of a time playing Santa Teresa with all that momentum of the community behind them on Thursday. Okay. So that should be a great game. There you go. Uh, Nathan, you want the closing words? Yeah, I think it's going to be an exciting season. I think we have some really good teams at the top of uh, our coverage areas. And, um, yeah, I think it will be, um, be exciting to see where, where everybody lands by season's ends. And I just want to thank everybody for uh, all of the subscriptions that we piled up during the, uh, during the buildup to this upcoming season. We've uh, had several weeks now of content, uh, daily content, and uh, – could not be more pleased uh, with the reaction from uh, from our readers. So thank you, and uh, 
Obviously, we're looking forward to another great season. Check us out every week uh, for our picks. That's the end of our week one show.